Jasomati Nandana Brajabara Nakara Kokula Randana Kana Jasomati Jasomati Nandana Brajabara Nakara Kokula Ranjana Pana Gopi Parana Dana Ma Dana Manohara Gopi Parana Gopi Parana Dana Ma Dana Manohara Gopi Parana Dana Ma Dana Manohara Kaleya Dama Navidana Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Jitina Purandara Navina Nagarapara Vishina Purandha Rana Vina Nagara Bara Vamti Vajana Suvasa Vamti Vajana Suvasa Jana Kala Natura Kula Natana Braja Jana Kala Natura Kula Natana Nanda Goda Nara Koala Nanda Godana Rakoala Nanda Godana Rakoala Govinda Madhava Navanita Chaskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Chaskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Chaskara Gopala Sundarananda Gopala Sundarananda Gopala Sundarananda Gopala Yamuna Tachachara Gopi Vasanahara Yamuna Tachachara Yamuna Tatachara Gopi Vasanahara Yamuna Tatachara Gopi Vasanahara Rasara Sikha Kripa Mohaya Rasara Sikha Kripa Mohaya Rasara Sikha Kripa Mohaya Shri Radha Balava Vrindavan 
ವೃಂದಾವನ ನಪಾರ ಬಾಲಾವೃಂದವಾನ ನಪಾರ
Krishna Padaya, Krishna Pastaya Buddhale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dhinami, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Gauravani Pacharini, Nevi Shesha Shunyavani Pashyatya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're going to read Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 2, Text Number 55. Sarvan Parta Manogatam Sarvan Parta Manogatam Sarvan Parta Manogatam Sarvan Parta Manogatam Atmane Atmanatushta Atmane Atmanatushta Atmane Atmanatushta Atmane Atmanatushta Sita Pragna Staduciate, Sita Pragna Staduciate, Sita Pragna Staduciate, Sita Pragna Staduciate, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Prajaya, Prajahati Yadakaman, Prajahati Yadakaman, Sarvan Parta Manogatam, Sarvan Parta Manogatam, Atmani Atmanatushta, Atmani Atmanatushta, Sita Pragnas Taduchate, Sita Pragnas Taduchate, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Yadahati Yadakaman, Prajahati Yadakaman, Sarvan Sarvan Parta Manogatam Sarvan Parta Manogatam Atmani Atmanatushta Atmani Atmanatushta Sita Pragnashta Duchate Sita Pragnashta Duchate Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Prajahati Yadakaman Prajahati Yadakaman
Não queria falar de ninguém. себе сознание Кришны и преданно служит Господу, обладает всеми достоинствами великих мудрецов, тогда как у человека, не достигшего духовного уровня, нет и не может быть никаких достоинств, поскольку он во всем руководствуется прихотями своего ума. Вот почему здесь сказано, что необходимо избавиться от всех гнездящихся в уме желаний, связанных чувствами удовольствия. Эти желания невозможно просто подавить. Но если человек занимается практикой сознания Кришны, они исчезают сами собой, без дополнительных усилий. Поэтому надо решительно посвятить себя деятельности в сознании Кришны, и преданное служение в короткий срок поможет нам развить божественное сознание. Тот, кто достиг духовного совершенства, всегда черпает удовлетворение в самом себе, сознавая себя вечным слугой Верховного Господа. Такой человек не подражает материалистам и не стремится удовлетворять прихоти своих чувств. Он всегда счастлив и удовлетворен, занимая свое естественное положение вечного слуги Верховного Господа. Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vikam Tam Sachevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Nikamsya E Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Nanda Radha Kanta Namostupe Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavan Nishmari Vishramanusate Vancha kaupata rubyascha, gripa sindhu varevacha, patita nam pavane pyo, vaishnave pyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasari Gora Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Arjuna was asking a question to Lord Krishna. He wanted to understand how to recognize somebody is in divine consciousness. Because Krishna had mentioned in the verse earlier that such a person is in divine consciousness and he achieves complete peace. 
Потому что в предыдущем стихе Господь упомянул о том, что человек, обладающий божественным сознанием, достигает полного умиротворения. So Arjuna asked his question, how do we know who's in transcendental consciousness? Arjuna says, what, what are his symptoms? How, how does he speak? How does he sit? And how does he walk? So it's an important question. Right. We heard this morning in Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit could understand Sukadeva Goswami was in transcendental consciousness. So Maharaj Parikshit, uh, he must have learned also from this conversation between his grandfather and Lord Krishna. Maharaj Parikshit. Yeah, Maharaj Parikshit learned about how to recognize a person in transcendental consciousness because his grandfather Arjuna had already discussed this with Lord Krishna. So, Ar Ar uh, Arjuna asked about four things. He wanted to know what is his symptoms, how does he speak, how does he sit, and how does he walk. How does he sit? Does he sit cross-legged? Does he sit against the wall? Or, you know, is Arjuna asking like this? No. No, he means, how does he, how does he sit means, how does he behave when he's not using his senses? When he stops working. And how does he walk? Does, it, does he walk straight or does he walk on his hands? How does he walk? Does he use his legs to walk? Maybe he walks on his hands. Maybe some yogi teachers, they walk on the hands, right? But it's not like that. Arjuna wants to understand what is his behavior when he's walking, when he's acting, when he's working. And he's, he's not asking about the external sign, but he's asking about the inner consciousness. And when he asks, how does he speak, it's, it's, he's, asking, he's not asking just, does he speak nicely, does he speak harshly, does he speak with authority, it's not like that. It's more about how he responds to people. When people speak to him, how does he respond to them? So speaking prophets is speaking is very important to understand who is in transcendental consciousness. Because one in transcendental consciousness, they should speak about Krishna. Of course, it's not very easy. To speak about Krishna, you have to know something about Krishna. Right. Do you know where Krishna lives? Do you know his telephone number? Do you know his email address? 
In my life, he's a yoga boy. <laughs> Do we know how to find Krishna's house? Вы знаете, как найти его дом? We have to know about Krishna. We have to know about Krishna's qualities and his activities. Мы должны знать о качествах Кришны, о его деяниях. We have to know about Krishna's relationships with his friends. Krishna, of course, has many friends. He's not, he's not alone. In the material world, people can be alone. But in the spiritual world, there's a lot of company, a lot of friends, everybody's together, a lot of friendly relationships. Everyone's a devotee. Everyone's devotee and they associate together. So we we want to know about Krishna and his activity, his behavior, his relationships. Then when we know when we know something about Krishna, then we want to share it with other people also. We want to see everything in relation to Krishna. Right? There was one devotee, uh, his name he was his name was Vamsi Das Babaji. And he was very renounced person. He would only speak about Krishna. So sometimes people would ask him, what do you think of the government? And he would say, Govardhan? Govardhan? You mean Govardhan? He would talk about Govardhan. He would not talk about the government. So, you could only think of Krishna. So that is the devotee in transcendental consciousness. So we want to understand the symptoms. The first, the first question Arjuna wanted to know, what is his what are the symptoms? So this is so this is answered in this verse tonight, which we're reading. That the person has no desire for sense gratification. But he still has desires. We don't stop desiring. Because we have a mind and the nature of the mind is to desire, we want, we need things, we want to do things. So we can't stop desires, but we can purify desires. We want to develop the, the desire for Krishna consciousness. So one who is in transcendental consciousness, they're always active in the service of Krishna. They do everything for Krishna. Right? They go to market to purchase the boga, to buy the vegetables, to buy the rice, to buy the flour. It's all for Krishna. Many ladies, their husbands are not devotees really, but still they will get their husband to go to market to buy the boat, to buy the vegetables, to buy things for Krishna. So in this way the husband is also becoming Krishna conscious. We try to engage everyone in the service of Krishna. People living at home with you may not be chanting Hare Krishna, but still they like prasadam. 
люди, живущие дома, им очень нравится Харе Кришна повторять, но все любят Прасад. And you can also play the holy name, the kirtan, the chanting of the holy names, and they can hear the vibration of the holy name. Then, of course, we put pictures on the wall of Krishna, and so every day they're seeing Krishna's picture. So this is Krishna consciousness. The people are becoming Krishna conscious by using their senses in relation to Krishna. Таким образом люди развивают сознание Кришны, используя свои чувства в сознании Кришны. If, if we don't see Krishna, then what will we will simply see the material world. Если мы не видим Кришну, то тогда мы просто будем видеть материальный мир. We will just see all the illusion of this material world. Тогда единственное, что мы будем видеть, это иллюзию этого материального мира. Is it a very beautiful place, this world? Is it very nice? I was in Kamchatka. <laughs> and so some one man there asked a question. He said, What do you think of this Kamchatka? How do you like it? <laughs> you know, some even some people I was going there to Chamkat. Kam, Kam, Kamchatka, and I met this other man from Moscow, and he told me, he said, my whole life I've been dreaming about coming to Chamkatka. It's been my golden life. I want to, I've been waiting my whole life, so many years, to come here to Kam, Kamchatka. Oh, people think it's something wonderful. Is it very wonderful? Well, it's, it's wherever you go in the material world, it's the same. The material world, there are 14 different levels of planets. There's higher planets, the heavenly planets. And there's lower planets. Many different levels of life, of civilization, in different, different ways of life. Just like Kamchatka is just one place on the planet, but there are many other places on the planet. Are they any different from each other? Everywhere there is old age, there is disease, there is also death. In China, they have one town. They say, this town in China, this one town in China, they say, people can live the longest life there. Everyone there, they live a very long life. They live to old age, very old age. So many people, they go to this town, they want to live there, they want to live the, to the old age. And they say the water is very powerful. If you drink the water, you will live to a oh, very long life. So people are coming, they're buying the water, they're taking many gallons of water to their home. Does it st but still they get old. Still they get disease. And still one day they have to die. You don't, es we cannot escape the problem of material life. So Kamchatka, we appreciate nature. Volcanoes. 
Kamchatka, many volcano, eh? <laughs> but we should appreciate who is behind the nature. Who created that nature? There is an artist, there is a person behind the creation. We speak about creation. Oh, this is a wonderful creation. Who made it? Hmm, just like you may see a new motor car, you say, oh, wonderful, who made it? Some, somebody made it. There's a person who built it. The same way when we look at material world, we look at a place, oh, countryside, very beautiful. Oh, wonderful, many trees, flowers, mountains. Who, but there's a person behind it. Также, когда мы смотрим на мат вот этот материальный мир, мы смотрим за годы, там, там такие прекрасные деревья, цветы, природа, но мы должны понимать, что за этим стоит какая-то личность, кто-то создал это творение. Man have made the town, the city. Человек сделал город. Just like people may say, oh, Blagovesians, very beautiful. Люди обычно говорят, о, Blagovesians такой красивый. Very nice. Такой хороший. Many people may come from other countries, other places, may blog away. Oh, so nice city, very nice, big roads, clean, everything nice. But when you live here every day, you don't think. We just think, oh. Kamchatka's better. <laughs> <laughs> we think the faraway place very nice. <laughs> but the people from Kamchatka come here, they think, oh, blog evasion, so nice. We forget who is behind the creation. So there's a person behind everything, responsible for everything. Just like there are intelligent men who built this city, built this, the, the town here, Kamchatka. <laughs> They planned it very nice, nice roads, communication, schools, hospital, everything. And we, we know it did not happen just by chance. It was not just a, one night there was a bomb, an explosion, the next morning everything was there. Scientists will explain creation like that. With a big bang. Everything here. So did blog of visions come from a big bang? There's intelligent people who designed, who made the plans. In the same way, there's an intelligent person behind the universe. Man made the towns and cities, God made the countryside. When we get vacation, when there's holiday time, then we want to go away from the city. We like to go to countryside, enjoy the country, enjoy nature, go to the beach, go to the mountains. Right? Yeah, when you get holiday, you go to the countryside, go to the beach. Yeah. We enjoy more the nature. 
And who made that nature? That is God. And so we have to become more conscious. Behind everything there is a person. So we want to get to come to transcendental consciousness. We have to give up the desire for just enjoying only the body. Because this body is only temporary, it's not eternal. So the pleasure we get from the body is very limited. The real pleasure is not the body, but from the soul. We have to feel, experience the spiritual nature. We want to awaken our spiritual nature. This is Krishna consciousness, to experience our spiritual nature. And it comes by working in the service of Krishna. Just like Arjuna, he's on the battlefield, he's going to fight as a service to Krishna. Arjuna didn't want to fight, but Krishna wanted him to do it. Krishna convinced him he should do it. This was his yoga. This is how Arjuna became perfect by following Krishna's instruction. So in material life, we are struggling with our mind and senses. We are trying to enjoy independently of Krishna. But in spiritual life, we are working as a servant of Krishna. And when we are connected in service to Krishna, we feel our spiritual nature awaken. No, there is pleasure in the soul. There is no real pleasure in the body. The pleasure of the body, just like, the what is the pleasure of the body? The animal, like the pig, the pig eats a lot of food, can fill his belly. So if we also fill our belly, then that play, it's the same as the pig. And the pig will eat and then sleep. We're doing the same thing. What is the difference between us and the animal? So the human life is meant for awakening our higher consciousness. And Krishna teaches us how to do this very in a very simple manner. It comes about by awakening our higher our consciousness, our the higher consciousness. We have to act. We cannot stop activities. But we can purify activities. When we work for Krishna. <coughs> so everyone's working. We see in this world. Everyone's working. The birds are working. The pigs are also working. Everybody's doing some kind of work. We have to work to get food. Prabhupada explains about the tiger, how the tiger also has to get food, he has to hunt. Prabhupada 
wherever the tiger goes, there's a little bird follows him. And the little bird comes with the tiger and he will warn all the other animals. Watch out, tiger is coming, watch out. All the other the animals will hear the little bird coming. Tiger is coming, watch out, tiger is coming. They will all run away. So tiger has a hard time to get food. Nobody comes and says, okay, tiger, I will be your food. You, you can eat me. No, a tiger has to work hard to get food. All the other animals, they just run away, they see the tiger. Or the big shark comes at the sea. If there's a big shark, all the other fish, whoo, they all run, they all go. They don't wait around. You don't want to be eaten by the shark. So they also have to work to get their food. But we don't just need only food for the body, we need spiritual food. Food for the soul. Food for the body, we can get that without too much effort. But we will not be satisfied with that for long. We want satisfaction. The satisfaction comes when we nourish the soul. And we nourish the soul by engaging in spiritual activity. Begins with chanting and hearing. We, we, this is actually bhakti, bhakti yoga is based on these things. It is the roots of the creeper of bhakti. So that seed of devotion is put in the heart. We, we, have, the, we have the seed already there somehow by the arrangement of Krishna. The seed has been planted in the heart. We have to water it. We have to take up some activities which we can offer to Krishna. Krishna describes Bhagavad Gita. All that you do, all you eat, all you offer, give away should be done as an offering. We want to we want to connect our activities in, in relation to Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is for, uh, it's it's there within everyone, but it has to be cultivated. It has to be cultivated through this process, through these activities, through not knowing what to do, avoiding certain things and doing certain certain things we have to do, certain things we don't want to do. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes about unsuccessful yogis. Right. Not every yogi is successful. Not every yogi goes back to Godhead. But they make, they make progress. I was just reading the Krishna book about the great devotee Mochi Kunda. You know Mochi Kunda? He was, he was a Kshatriya. He was 
from the family of Maharaj Ikshvaku. Right. right. Krishna instructed the knowledge of yoga to the sun god Vivishwan. Vivishwan gave it to Manu, then Manu gave it to Ikshvaku. So Manu was a great king on this planet. And his descendants were there. They were all great kings, Kshatriyas. So Muchi Kunda was uh, a great king and he was a great fighter and he got taken by the demigods to the higher planets because Kartikeya, Kartikeya means the son of Shiva. Shiva has two sons, Ganesh and Kartikeya. Kartikeya is a great general in charge of the army of the demigods. So he saw this king Muchikunda as a great fighter. So he said, come with me to higher planets to fight. So, you know, if you get the chance to go to heavenly planets, we'd like to go, right? Mm. You want to go to higher planets? So Mochi Kunda went to higher planets to fight the demons on behalf of the demigods. And time on the higher planets is different from the time here. One year here is only one moment there. So Muchi Kunda was there fighting and it was thousands of years on this planet. So he did not get any rest because he was fighting, working so hard for the demigods. So after a lot of fighting then they told him, okay, you've done very good, you've been fighting very good, you should have a rest. We'll give you a rest, you can take rest. We give, we, and, and they said, we'll give you benediction to repay you for all your hard work. But they said, we cannot give you liberation. Is that only Krishna can give liberation? The demigods won't give liberation. So, but they said, we'll give you benediction. So he said, give me the benediction that I can sleep without any disturbance. And if anybody will disturb me, when I open my eyes, I will burn them to ashes. An unusual benediction, eh? Why he would want to do that? I, anyway, Muchi Kunda was resting in the cave, sleeping, and he, because he'd been fighting for a long time. He had not slept for a long time. So he laid down, he's sleeping, and Krishna came there. And there was one demon, he was trying to catch Krishna. So Krishna went into the cave, and the demon followed Krishna. And then the demon saw Muchi Kunda sleeping there. And he thought that that was Krishna. So he kicked him. And he woke up Muchikunda. 
And he opened his eyes. He was very angry. Oh, you woke me up. Oh, he opened his eyes and fire came out from his eyes. And the demon burned to ashes. So then this Muchi Kunda, then he met Lord Krishna and he was surprised to see Krishna there because Krishna was not Krishna was very effulgent and he lit the whole cave up with the effulgence coming from his body. So Krishna was uh, uh Muchi Kunda asked asked who 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 are you? He wanted to understand. He could not immediately identify Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so he asked Krishna about his identity. And so then Krishna told him that I came here at the request of Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma asked me to come here. And I've come here to relieve the planet of all the demons, and you just helped me by burning this one demon to ashes. So Lord Krishna explained about his identity and his mission in this world. And then he told Muchikunda that I know you are my devotee. But you've been because you are a Kshatriya and you've been killing many animals. You've been fighting and killing many animals. So you cannot immediately go back to God. Even though he is a great devotee, he wouldn't go back to God immediately. But he could meet Krishna. He could see Krishna. He could be with Krishna. So Krishna told him that in this life you can purify yourself from killing all the animals. So Muchi Kunda went to Badarik Ashram. He went to the Himalayas. In the Himalayas there's the Badarik Ashram. It's where uh, there are many great sages and great saints. They go there to perform penance and austerities to prepare for their going back to God. And Lord Krishna told Mochikunda, in your next life you will take birth in a devotee family. And then from the beginning of your life you will be Krishna conscious and you will become a great devotee and you will teach Krishna consciousness. So Muchi Kunda was able to become, he had to take another birth before he could go back to God. But Prabhupada told us in this life we should try to get perfection. Don't take birth again. We have to become perfect in this life. If we take birth again, then so much trouble. Again, we have to go through all the, the, the taking birth is painful, a lot of trouble, and then growing up, and education. So many troubles. I remember there was one lady in our ashram. Her name was Gori. She was American lady. 
and she was doing book distribution, very good book distributor. But then she got some disease, she got some fatal disease, she's going to die. So she told Prabhupada, she said, Prabhupada, I just want to take birth again and come back and distribute your books. But Prabhupada said, no, no, don't do that. Why you should do that? Just go back to Godhead. Hmm. You, don't, you don't have to worry about coming back to distribute my books. You just go back to God. So in this very lifetime, we can make our lives perfect. We can go back to God. Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita the secret, what we need to do. Do you know what is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Who knows? What is the most important verse in Bhagavad Gita? Prabhupada told us he said most important verse is Janma Karma Chame Devyam Evam Yoveti Takvata. And he said, one who understands my birth and activities to be transcendental, then upon giving up this body, they will not come back again to this world. Yeah, if we understand Krishna's birth and his activities, how they are not material, how they are transcendental, then no more birth, you won't come back. Very important. So this weekend, Krishna's birthday, Janmashtami. We will be talking about, you can discuss more about Krishna's birthday. It's very important for us to understand how Krishna comes in this world. How to understand the transcendental nature of Krishna's activity. And as Krishna is transcendental, Krishna's devotees are also transcendental. Right? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mamchayo Vayabicharena Bhakti Yogena. One who engages in my service, he comes to the transcendental level. It's not under the modes of nature. We are under the modes. Our desires are then influenced by the modes of nature. It means sometimes goodness, but often passion and ignorance. Passion and ignorance just simply give us so much trouble, make us our life unpleasant. But if we cultivate the mode of goodness, then we can go on to transcend the modes of nature. Mm -hmm. 
And Prabhupada began the purport with, with the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that a devotee has all good qualities. Because he's active, he's working only for Krishna. One who is not a devotee, even though they, they, they may work very hard, they may seem to have good qualities, but actually they're under the modes of nature. They don't really have good qualities. We're trying to conquer material energy. Prabhupada said, we are declaring war on Maya. When we take initiation in Krishna consciousness, then we're declaring war on the material energy. We're giving up our, we've given up the attempt to enjoy material life. We want spiritual life. So spiritual life means everything for Krishna. Working for Krishna. Any questions? So Krishna describes the perfection, uh, this disposition, yeah, when, uh, when he describes this person. Uh, but um, on, our, uh, on our stage, uh, we have ups and downs, we have uh, enthusiasm, we have taste, but uh, sometimes we fall and stand up again and, and go on. But uh, it's really, it's really upset us. It, it makes our, um, our, our faith weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, can, it can last for a long time. Yeah. And it seems that you are eternal. Yeah. And we are, we are not sure where we can именно вот этого сознания, то есть постоянного, да, вот самархи, постоянного. That we can reach this position of this this person who has transcendental consciousness. Well, we give the example, just like you go to sea, you go on the boat to cross the ocean, you cannot expect there won't be storms. There will be big waves, big storms up and down, the boat will go up and down. 
what can you do? You can't get off the boat. You have to stay on the boat. And when you're in the middle of the ocean, sometimes you think, oh, we're never going to get there. But you just have to keep going. So this is part of the process of devotional service. We have we have to get rid of these tendencies which are there in our heart. This nature, this conditioned nature which causes us up and down, sometimes enthusiastic, sometimes depressed. There will be these different tendencies in the course of our devotional service because we're not yet very advanced, so we have to go through these things, we have to come to the higher level. Get, and the process requires to get rid of the, the dirt from the heart. We have to do more intense devotional service. We have to become more absorbed in our Krishna consciousness. If we take it too, too, if we're too slack, we're too relaxed, we're not taking it urgently enough, we're not putting enough effort into our Krishna consciousness, so it's like that. Если мы будем делать все спустя рукава, если мы будем расслаблены, если мы не будем прикладывать усилия, то мы ничего не достигнем. But when we become more intense and more absorbed, then we can go on to come to the higher goal. Но если наша практика будет интенсивна, если мы будем погруженными, то мы обязательно сделаем этот прогресс. So we have we have to be convinced that there is, there is something there is a higher thing there. It's waiting for us. That we have to try to achieve the higher thing, come to the higher platform. The fact that we're up and down and up and down, this is the time that we're conditioned, we're not we haven't got rid of all of our material attachments. Maybe we're not working hard enough in our japa, we're not trying hard enough. Maybe we're deviating too much from the Krishna conscious program. Or maybe it's just going to take some more time. And we have to tolerate, and we have to go on. Right? And ba Srimad Bhagavatam, there's the one verse where Krishna, where it said, Lord Brahma is praying that one who tolerates all the difficulties, but goes on trying to do devotional service, then he becomes my devotee. And the acharyas give the example, they say, what does a, what does a, a, a man have to do? Just like your father is a rich man, what do you need to do to inherit his money? What do you need to do? To, you, when the father is a rich man and you, you know, you're the son, what do you need to do to get his money? You just have to remain alive. 
И для того, чтобы унаследовать это богатство, этому богатому человеку, все, что ему нужно делать, это оставаться живым. One day the father will die. Then the son will get the money. Right? The same way, we are all the children of Krishna. We just simply have to stay in Krishna consciousness. And naturally we will go back to God. Even though our Krishna consciousness may not be very high, may not be very good, we keep going. Yeah, we lament that I'm a hopeless devotee, I'm not a good devotee. But I'm not going to give up trying to be a devotee. And Krishna said, even if you're sinful, even if you have some sinful habits, still Krishna will take you back to God. So Krishna has a special relationship for his devotees. He's trying to help all of us. So he sent devotees like Prabhupada. How to go back, hold on to Prabhupada's doti, he would take you back to God. We don't have any qualification. But just hold on to Prabhupada. And he can take us back. <coughs> yes, Madam. <coughs> No, that's good. We're all servants. In every rasa, one is a servant. The quality of service is there in all the rasas. The mother and father are also servants. Krishna's friends are also servants. And the gopis are also servants. But I can't, I can't, cho I can't uh, choose one of these rasas. Uh, I, I, I feel I'm fallen. Uh, so, um, but the purest stage of of that rasa, the purest stage of that rasa, Krishna. It seems that Krishna is not interested in it. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, Krishna is interested in everyone. And he's especially interested in his servants. So you just do your service for Krishna. And Krishna will take care for you. Krishna says, he's equal to everyone, but whoever renders service to me, he is a friend, I am, and I am in him. So Krishna has a special relationship with anyone who is serving him. So, just do your service. Dashira, Lord Chaitanya taught everyone to be the servant. And then it's not that you have to desire or to select some rasa, but it's revealed to us by Krishna when we're ready. When we're ready for that, but that's a very high stage of devotion. So we just try to be the same. Okay. Yeah. Вопрос такой, можно ли вот, обрести любовь как цель, да, то есть там крема бхакти, и то, о чем идет речь, о чем говорится, да, традиция говорит, что ну, ну, не осознав свое истинное я. We, but we have to go through the stages, we have to do sadhana, we have to come, first of all, before you come to Prema Bhakti, there's the other stage, you have to develop, get rid of all the anarthas, and then become very steady, nishta, fixed, and then ra ruchi, and then asati, and then bhava, then comes Prema. Yeah, но до према бхакти существует очень много других стадий. Сначала мы должны следовать садане, достигнуть, а, закрепиться на этом уровне, достичь, достичь нишки, затем пойдет ручи, асакти, бхава, и только потом мы можем достичь према бхакти. So, yeah, we get према бхакти. Lord Chaitanya came to give према бхакти to everyone. Господь Чайтанья пришел для того, чтобы дать нам према бхакти, не то, чтобы дать ее всем. And he said, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chiti Kurihi Udai. Krishna Prema is in, our, uh, in the heart of everyone. It has to be awakened by hearing. So we have to hear regularly, we have to intensely hear. But prema is it's very high level. We have are, are we qualified? Are we you know? We we it's good to be ambitious at the same time. We want prima bhakti. Prabhupada first deserve, then desire. Это очень хорошо в этом плане быть амбициозным, то есть желать, желать достигнуть такого высокого уровня. Но Шила Прабхупада говорил, сначала стань достойным, а потом желай. То есть, если я правильно понял, что вот эти вот чувства, это ну, как лучи, да, вкусы, какие-то вот влечения, это просто вкус, то есть это не любовь. Yeah, 
если мы вот энтузиастично видим некоторые преданные, они прям э, страстно да, вот погружаются в преданное служение. То есть это как раз проявление именно вкуса, а не любви, может быть, ну, или ну, не любви, скажем, не премия. Well, faith is the beginning to the path of prema. But on the path, just like mango fruit, the mango may be green, but if you in time it will ripen. So in the same way they have faith, that faith will become more mature, one day it will become flame. We don't know who will become the Prima Bhakti. There's Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti, right? Devotional services on three levels. They're all pure devotees. Not only prema bhaktas are pure. Sadhana.